Um, it's been a while, but I felt like I really needed to make a video about this. Um, and first of all, if you haven't seen my video called When You Abuse the Abuser, please check that out because I feel like it's going to explain and tie into a lot that I'm going to say. Um, I'm also going to be reading a lot of this, which I don't normally do such a, a hardcore script, but, um, because I had a lot of emotions about it, I, this was actually, like, I was just journaling. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to make it a video because I think that people who have never experienced being in an abusive relationship might be uh, confused by conflicting stories. Um, I also think that there is a lot of potential, I'm not saying this is the case in this situation, but there is a lot of potential for someone who is an abuse survivor to start questioning themselves. Um, and what they know reality is and was. So I just wanted to touch a little bit on what may be going on in a situation like this or a similar situation um, from my own experience and from experience with working with women who have been abused, working with men who have been abused, um, and having friends who have been in that situation as well. Um, so that's my intention here is, is education. Um, so that we can just all help each other and help ourselves and avoid these really horrible situations or get out of them when we can. Um, so I, I want to preface this by stating that I'm not the type of person who enjoys questioning other people's motives by any means. Um, I really like to hold the belief that people have good intentions. Um, however, I do want to address Blake Jenner's very public apology to his former partner that was apparently 11 months in the making. Um, I don't know Blake. I don't know Melissa apart from what I've seen on their social media posts um, and their public interactions. and obviously their their work um but like i said what i do know is abusers i know the abuse cycle i know surviving abuse i understand firsthand what happens inside your mind i know what the fallout looks like and because i know that very well i am inclined to believe melissa benoist's very emotional statement from last november if any of that was false, she gave a performance that was better than anything I've ever seen on Supergirl or Glee. She perfectly described what goes on in the mind and heart of someone who is systematically abused by someone with narcissistic tendencies. Um, and her video, when I watched it, was, um, it was very emotional for me. I didn't want to make a video about it. There were so many coming out at the time, and I felt like what she said stood on its own. Um, if you haven't seen it, I would encourage you to watch it, but I have a feeling that you've probably already seen it. Um, I just, I think she's an incredibly brave person, and I admire her a lot, um, and that she's continued on creating a, an amazing life for herself. Um, and I appreciated that she took responsibility for herself in that video and the choices that she made. Um, she admitted to, as time went on, getting physical in return with her partner, her former partner. Um, and unfortunately, this is exactly what many abusers want. They want us to be their perfect scapegoat if ever anything comes out in the open. It also keeps those of us who were living within the abuse cycle from leaving or reaching out for help because 
we become terrified that they're going to reveal us as a monster, the monster that they try to convince us that we are. Um, but to be clear, this is also a monster that they wanted to create. Again, I'm not saying that this is what Blake did. None of us were there. What I'm saying is this is a pattern that I have seen in these relationship dynamics over and over and have lived. And I'm just noticing some similarities. But none of us were there, none of us know. Now, coincidentally, perhaps, Blake made sure to bring up that his former partner physically abused him as well. And he also mentions mental and emotional abuse. Being threatened about working with certain female co-workers or taking certain jobs, taking pictures with female co-workers, etc. I just want to address this um, potentially from Melissa's perspective, um, not that she needs me to defend her, but just as someone who, who has been in what I believe is a similar situation. When you're in a relationship when you're, where your self-esteem is eroded, which Melissa describes in her video, it leaves you very fragile and at times in a very paranoid state. You do feel as if you're going to be abandoned at any moment because words have been said with the intention of making you feel unworthy of being with your partner. Words are often said that imply interest or admiration in others, perhaps co-workers. I know that was certainly the case for me, so I'm not pretending that I'm objective right now. Uh, you do become jealous and possessive because you've already been isolated from your support system. This person has become your everything, and now it seems like maybe they aren't as all-in as they claim to be. And maybe they aren't as head over heels in love with you as they first said they were. Maybe you're standing in the middle of a frozen lake, suddenly realizing you're alone and beginning to see cracks forming beneath your feet. That's how it feels. So do you behave jealously? Yes. Do you behave irrationally? Yes. Do you act out in desperate ways? Yes. Are you depressed? Do you self-harm? Yeah, a lot of times you do. Or you threaten to. And most people in these situations would and do. Because your mental state is being broken down. This is the nature of this type of abuse. Your sense of self fades. Your actions no longer represent your true self. And that might be the most painful part of all, losing your true self. And that may also be the recovery that requires the most time and effort. I truly hope that Melissa has found happiness and peace. I hope that she's found a partner who helps foster a safe and loving environment, who understands the ebb and flow of recovery from abuse. I hope her son brings her so much joy and a healing love that she never dreamed of. And I'm confident that she'll raise him to be a man who values, respects, and protects his partner. I also truly hope that the timing of this apology from her former partner in no way diminishes this immensely happy time for her young family. And for Blake, I sincerely hope he is getting the help that he spoke about in his apology. Perpetuating abuse comes from past pain and trauma. I in no way want to minimize or dismiss his own struggles or road to recovery. I really appreciate his willingness to speak publicly about his mistakes, regardless of if I agree with everything he said or what his his intentions may or may not have been. I don't think that punishing for him forever is the right thing to do um, 
I know that a lot of people feel that way. They don't want to forget. They don't want him to have any sort of success in the industry. Um, I don't think that that's necessarily the right thing to do. But it is, however, very important to be aware of the effects of abuse. And not only if you're in an abusive relationship, because sadly, chances are if you chances are that if you aren't in an abusive relationship, you know someone who is. Even if you aren't aware that they're in one. Without awareness, we can't help anyone, whether they are being abused or are the ones who are being abusive. If you are on the road to recovering your true self, please like and subscribe to my channel. That is my focus. That is my goal. And please know that even though we've never met, my love and support is with you in this journey. Thanks so much for watching.